By 1960, the civil rights movement was in full swing, but Jim Crow was dying a slow death. Victories had been earned, but there were still many wars to be waged. Stores like this Woolworths in Greensboro, North Carolina, would sell blacks their products, but not serve them at their lunch counters. Thus, the stage was set for a new form of activism in 1960. That same year, four students from North Carolina A&T staged the first student sit-in. After having purchased toothpaste and school supplies, the four men sat down at the lunch counter and ordered coffee, only to be told by the white waitress, I'm sorry, but we don't serve colored here. Nashville, Tennessee, 1960, and the Athens of the South is filled with student activism. Under the leadership of Jim Lawson, who teaches Gandhi's methods of nonviolence and passive resistance, students such as Diane Nash organize sit-ins, independent of those in Greensboro, to protest similar business practices of department stores in Nashville. And while some stores did close their counters, the student protests in Nashville elicited a far different response from the whites in the city, dumping ketchup over the protesters' heads, putting out cigarettes on the protesters' backs. And while the Nashville police largely stood idly by, the protesters confounded the white racists by refusing to fight back, by practicing passive resistance, and taking in stride what they dished out. Eventually, the response of the whites in Nashville became more violent. Blacks were yanked off the stools on which they sat and beaten with impunity in the stores and in the streets. Ironically, it was the blacks that were frequently arrested for these events. Whites always walked scot-free. Undeterred by the violence and the arrest of so many of their colleagues, the student activists in Nashville pressed on with more and more sit-ins. A first wave would get arrested, a second wave would replace it, a second wave would get arrested, and a third wave would replace it. The black community in Nashville, in a show of solidarity, raised some $50,000 to pay the fines and bail out the student activists who had been arrested. Finally, in April 1960, Mayor Ben West met with prominent leaders of the student movement in Nashville, as well as key leaders from the SCLC. The situation came to a head on the steps of the courthouse in Nashville when Diane Nash asked Mayor West if he felt it was wrong to discriminate against a person solely on the basis of their race or color. West did not hesitate. He nodded and said yes. He believed it was wrong. The next morning, headlines in the Nashville, Tennessee, and read, Mayor says, Intergrade Counters.